This is a story about the human race. A kingdom divided. Jesus said any kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. A house divided cannot stand. What is it about the human race as a species? Our advances in technology are used for the military industrial complex in order to destroy ourselves. It doesn't make sense. Something's wrong. What would make brother turn against brother? Why would a species destroy itself? How could a species lock their own kind in concentration camps? Do experiments on their own kind? Something's wrong. There's a plan for world depopulation. The New World Order has planned it. Who is this New World Order? Who are they? What is their purpose? How did it start? Where did it come from? We don't know. A lot of these answers are only answered in the Bible. The knowledge of the tree of good and evil. The Bible said, I will put enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Seeds reference DNA. Different species. DNA carries all our genetic material to reproduce a species, but if DNA is split, what would be the result? Who made the pyramids? Where did they come from? Were these the sons of God mentioned in the Bible? Did they bring the code of death? Did they split our DNA? Did they duplicate our DNA and did they add their own DNA? The Bible tells a story in Genesis 6. It says that they did. It says the fallen angels had sex with human women and created the Nephilim. Who were they? Who is the Nephilim? What is the end result? Is the end result a kingdom that's divided against itself? The book of Daniel tells us another clue. It said the last kingdom, they shall mix themselves with the seed of men. What would be the outward manifestation of this? Would there be signs, something we could see with our own eyes right in front of our face? So obvious, hidden in plain sight, that it became invisible, right in front of our faces, as we walk around in a deep sleep, unable to see it, unable to recognize it. Would this be the recombinant DNA putting back together of another species, one mixed with another? Who are they? Who are we? Where are we going as a species? This video is to answer those questions, and the only answers are in the Bible. Are we the Bene A Elohim? Are we a kingdom divided? Are the wars within us? They have said, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret. Think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down.
All right, <clears throat> that's a video I did a long time ago called Kingdom Divided. It's turned out to be 100% true. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that video that's from, let's see where it's from. Hang on one second. Let me see. November 30th, 2011. That's Kingdom Divided Part 1. Okay, now what I did in Kingdom Divided for you guys is I drew in a hieroglyph. Who can draw in a hieroglyph? <laughs> you know, you got ancient aliens. Those guys haven't figured it out. You got Egyptologists since... How long have Egyptologists been trying to figure out the mystery of the pyramids? Yeah? Well, why don't we just go over it? It just got solved for you. The entire mystery of humanity just got solved right in front of your face. So I want to stop and just give all the glory to the Lord God. I didn't do it. You think I did that? <laughs> no. The Lord God did that through me as a gift to help people wake up. Because the Bible says in the end, everything that's secret will be made public. That was probably the second or third uh, item that the Lord had me decrypt after I got saved and I was manifesting this ability that was beyond supernatural and it was honestly it was kind of blowing my mind <laughs> I was freaking out so I'm going to show you it during this video I'm going to call this video hidden in plain sight now just think about this. What you just got through seeing is a hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. Okay, we're talking, you know, ancient, ancient Egypt, 1,300 years B.C., before Christ. Okay, so I'm going to show you how the manifestation of that hieroglyph has taken over everything now. The stuff I just showed you in the hieroglyph, you're going to see it everywhere now. It's going to be everywhere, and you're going to get to see it. Okay, so let's just crack into it, okay? let's. Uh, I'm going to drop this down. Uh, I will take this and probably just slide it over here for the time being. I'm going to open up the female rival folder, and what I would like to do is I'd like to lead up to I would like to lead up to the hieroglyph again, and what I mean by that is, you know, I just broke down the hieroglyph, and that was one of the very first things the Lord had me do. The virgin turning it upside down was number one. The very first thing he had me do was draw a couple images of the virgin, and I saw this crazy agenda, and I was like, what in the world is going on here? And then the Lord had me drawing that I, I opened up a national geographic it was april 2001 and it's called pharaohs of the sun and i opened that thing up and and when i saw the hieroglyph in there just all of a sudden the spiritual gift kicked in and i just i could see i'm like what is going on so the lord told me go enlarge it and put it on a light board and draw it in all the changes of shadow 
James 1, every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the creator of heavenly lights, not like them who cast shifting shadows. So all I really did in that hieroglyph was block in the shadows so the images would be blocked in. Because when you're looking at an image and it's got these shadows and these lines, you know, they're, you can tell, if you're an artist, you can tell this doesn't look quite right. What's up? Well, the only way to find out what's up is to block in the shadows. And then it shows you the alternate image that the artist was going for to hide in there. Well, and I don't believe that they're completely conscious of it when they're doing it. They're just like a bunch of ants and the ant farm just doing what, you know, the queen's telling them. So let's go ahead and let's lead into the hieroglyph again. But let's go over some data y'all have recently seen. And then I'm going to show you a couple commercials. You tell me who's doing it. <laughs> okay, this will be good. Okay, so you just saw me jaw in right in front of your face a hieroglyph that's 1,300 years before Christ. And what's the agenda? There's an alien. There's inside a human, inside of a human, penetrating a female that's on her knees, impregnating her, and the child that the Pharaoh's holding that has the alien in his head, the child that the alien's holding, Akhenaten, Akhenaten is the Pharaoh, and inside the head of the Pharaoh is an alien, and the child that he's holding has this weird elongated skull, and inside the skull is a dead sheep and a reptile. Yeah. So way back then, let's say that's when the that's when the mixture started. Isn't it interesting? We have Lady Gaga getting out of an egg on stage saying, My performance at the Grammy Awards is about a new race of beings being birthed within the human race. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> It's true. <laughs> That's why it's perfect. That says, uh, Lord, let me see it. Anyway, all glory to God. So let's do it. So, <clears throat> okay, let's go over just a few things real quick. Let's see. We'll just start here. We'll start with my steering wheel. My steer. you know what, let's start with, I want to make sure the female thing's in here. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's in here. So let's let's just start here. So there's the steering wheel I showed you of my car the other day. It's It's the face of a bug. There's the eye, there's another eye, and I drew this one in again, and the eye is closed. One eye open, one eye closed, and then the mandibles right here go down right there, and then I, I penciled in, if a guy was sitting there, you know, and there his penis was there, it'd be going in the mouth of the bug. So the, the steering wheel of a car is positioned exactly the same as the largest altar in the world, which is right here next to it. There you go. There's the largest altar in the world. The whole thing's a bug. And there's a penis going in the mandibles of the bug. And just so you, you get a rudimentary image to see, I'll take this actual image of a bug with its antenna and its eyes and its mandibles, and I'll just slide it right over so you can see there it is. Absolutely what it is. Okay, then I'll slide the steering wheel. Oops. I'll slide the steering wheel over on the bug. See, there you go. So the steering wheel is identical to the altar. There you go. So I just put the steering wheel on top of the altar. It's identical. I just put it on top of the bug. There you go. It's obviously a bug. And then I, here's one I colored red just for your, you know, I was, I was praying. I heard the Lord tell me, make them the same color. So there you go. So the steering wheel is identical to the largest altar in the world, isn't it? And then here, the, the this image right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna enlarge this image. This is the capital of the United States. There you go. There's there's our there's the capital of the U.S. See it? Got the house and center of the Capitol building. And here's the big bug. There's the eye right here. There's the eye right here. And then there's the mandibles right here. And, you know, I think it's interesting, this circle and these circles right here, this makes like a worker bee, a worker bug. So one, and then there's the queen. So it's two in one, really. So there's the bug, the, the eye, the eye. And then here's the worker, the eye, and the eye. But then this part that's the worker doubles as the mandibles right here. See it? And oddly enough, what's in the center of the mandibles is Ulysses S. Grant. 
and the name Ulysses means wrathful, and then there's a dead sheep on the statue of Ulysses S. Grant. I've shown that to you in other videos before. There's a dead sheep right there in his beard. So now let's go back here and let's, uh, let me move this over just a little bit. Got, got moved. Okay, so the capital of the United States of America is identical to the largest altar in the world in the Catholic Church. See, there it is. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Bug with mandibles. Well, what's the brain of the bug right there? It's the U.S. Capitol. So do you think a bug is running everything that's going on on the inside of that? The answer is, of course. <clears throat> the angel of the bottomless pit. I want to be very clear about this. Who do you think that bug is? What do you think the bug is? The angel of the bottomless pit. Revelation 9-11. They had a king over them. The angel of the bottomless pit. Apollyon. Who had a king over them? Oh, the, the locusts from the pit. You know, that have tails like scorpions that are going to come out and sting everybody when the earth hatches. Yeah, because the earth is going to birth what's in it, what's under it, the bottomless pit. It's going to open up. Okay, so here we go. And then here you go. Here's obviously a dress uh, where it's a bug. There's the eye. There's the eye. There's the mandibles. Again, on the crotch. The, the mandibles are always on the female genitalia. Here's another bug on another dress. Mandibles at the genitalia. Here is a Venus flytrap tattoo. That is obviously a vagina. If anyone thinks that's just a flower, I think you're completely wrong. I would beg to differ with you. And the reason it's called a Venus flytrap, think about it. What's Venus? Venus is the morning star, Lucifer. So you could call it a Lucifer flytrap. And it's shaped like a vagina. And here we go. Now I'm going to put that. This is the t-shirt from the, the clothing line called Lurking Class. Remember, Lurking Class? Uh, it's got, look, an eight-pointed star right here. Let me, let me move this. See the eight-pointed star? Eight-pointed star is the morning star. It's Lucifer again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the morning star. There's Lucifer again. And then if you look at the front of the t-shirt, it has an upside down cross and a lightning bolt. There you go. It's very clearly identifiable. And so here's a skeleton wearing a shawl around him. And it's really coming up from behind a curtain. And the skeleton has a penis because this is an image of a bug coming out from the dimension from which it was called forth from. And the female reproductive system was the the system from which this got started. So if you wanted to open the door to that system, let me show you how to do it. So to opening the door to to the bottomless pit or to the, there you go. What do you think that is? Is that a bug coming out of there? It certainly is. And they just kind of dressed it up. And you know, it's a very telling image. It's very, it's very concise. Because coming out of that dimension, which is the female reproductive system, is the bug, the angel of the bottomless pit. There it is. Now, let me show you something really fascinating. This is a Venus flytrap. It's obviously a vagina. And then look at this Venus flytrap right here with the sheep caught in it. You see the sheep in... And this is a closed up Venus flytrap. And then they conveniently, look, look how they conveniently put the wing right there. See it? See the wing coming out? Like, oh, that's very convenient that the wing's right there. Uh, so it could make a perfect sheep head. That's a sheep trapped in a Venus flytrap. Ever hear anyone like making a joke? I have many times call it a penis flytrap. No, nah, they're just making fun of us. So anyway, there's a dead sheep in the Venus flytrap. And I'll take this image of a sheep and just slide it over so you can see rudimentary image. There you go. There it is. And the only difference is the, is the ears going up instead of the ear going down because it got pinched off. Let me see. Watch this. I'll slide it over. Look, there you go. Now, what's really fascinating is this is a different girl. This is not the same image as this one. I want you to look. Look at look at these uh, little vines coming off over here. And look at the ones over here. So, you know, this is a totally different girl, totally different image 
but it's got the exact same agenda. She's got a giant Venus flytrap coming off her buttocks. And look what's in the center of her back. A sheep caught in the Venus flytrap. Now, here's the Rio Olympic Stadium right here. I'm going to click on this and show this to you. This is the Rio Olympic Stadium. That's a large vagina. It even said it all over the news when, when the opening ceremony happened. It was all over the papers and news that the Rio Stadium looked like a giant vagina. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to take this image that's allegedly supposed to just be the virgin, and it's really a vagina. There's no doubt about it. Then I want to take this sketchy tank, and I'm just going to put it right over there, because this was the entrance for that creature to get out on into this world. There you go. You see it? And he's using angels as a source of energy. So you see that? And that's why this sketchy tank looks like, is dressed up to look like an image of the Virgin. Now I'm going to take, I'm sorry. <clears throat> now remember, it's all the same as the largest altar in the world. A bug with a penis going in its mouth. And the altar that's it's made up of is a big dead sheep. And the penis is part of the altar of the dead sheep. I mean, this is one in a trillion, folks. No one could even think this up. So I'm going to take the colored image, and I'm going to take it, and there you go. Look at that. That is so telling. Look at that. That shows that the vagina was the portal for the creature that's coming out of the portal. There it is. I mean, and look, and there's the same thing in the largest altar in the world is... Is that? Look at that. There it is. Goodness gracious. Here's an image of an ant that's harvesting honeydew off, off uh, an aphid. And I'm going to enlarge that, and that's what's going on. That's what they harvest. Now, I'm going to click on an image of my steering wheel just to show you that it's got one eye open and one eye closed. See? So one eye's open right here on the steering wheel. And look, this little line's here to make one eye closed. Now you know why it says, Jesus said, Jesus said in John 15, if I had not come and done the works no other man did among them, they would have no sin. But now they have both hated me and my father, bringing to pass what is written in their law. They hated me without cause. So Jesus was quoting Psalm 35, 19. Go look it up. Neither let them that are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. So when, when someone's winking at you, this creature is winking at you through them. You see what I mean? Because there's the eye open, there's the eye closed. And I have people wink at me all the time. It's like, I mean, I had someone wink at me uh, this morning, this morning, yep, getting a coffee. Guy, like, he goes, what's your name? And I I said, Jonathan, and he goes, oh, I thought it was Don. And I'm, that's okay, but yeah, he closed one eye, looked right at me. So anyway, so that's where the winking the eye thing comes from, because this is a representation of the angel of the bottomless pit. Who, uh, the king of the bottomless pit they had a king over them. Who had a king over them? The locust. Well, what do you think this thing is? It's a representation of the their king, Apollyon. That's, so you're getting a pretty good look at him, I think. There you go. That's what you're dealing with. Why do you think a bunch of locusts are going to come out of the pit? Where do, you th do you think the locusts have a king that's not one of them? You know what I mean? I mean, does that make sense? Of course not. They had a king over them. Who had a king over them? Well, Revelation 9-11 says they had a king over them, Apollyon, the angel of the bottom of the pit. But all of Revelation 9 is about the locusts that are coming out of the pit that have tails like scorpions and will sting men. And by the way, that's all going to be in this hieroglyph right now. You're going to see it all. It's a bust. <laughs> that's so awesome. Okay, so here we go. Now, let me show you something else. This is kind of wild. Okay, so here is an image of the virgin you see you know it's a y'all know like 
that's how they draw the virgin with this little aura thing around her. But she's wrapped in a shawl. But look, it's a bug. It's a praying mantis. Let me ask you an honest question. Why would you ever turn the virgin into a praying mantis wrapped in a shawl like the virgin? Because it's true. That's what's behind the scene. That's what's really running this system. The stone rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. Who do you think the builders are? Who do you think the builders are? There you go. That's who the builders are. The ones that used the bait to trap God's angels. That's who the builders are. They built the whole planet using humans as slaves and using the energy of trapped angels that don't know their own identity. Now, here's a girl that's got a tattoo right above her vagina, and it's identical to my steering wheel. So let me, uh, let me just slide this over. And let me just, uh oh, let me just reduce this in size and let me slide one on top of the other and just show you how obvious this is. So why would uh, not just one, but repetitive girls get that as a tattoo? Look at that. So see that girl's tattoo is identical to my steering wheel. Weird. Well, isn't that odd? The proximity of the mandibles in my vehicle to where my penis would be? Isn't that odd that the girl's tattoo is right where your penis goes? I think that's pretty impossible. There's a girl with the same exact tattoo. And you know it's not the same because she's, well, this girl's got the dragon on one leg and it says, soy la mayor. And it's, it means I am the best. And uh, yeah, the best at what? So anyway, and so let's just keep going. Here's a guy with the big image of a virgin on his back. Oh, I'm sorry. I clicked on the wrong one. Let me ask you this. This is a strip club in San Antonio. It says dream girls because basically it is a dream. Uh, what's really behind the scenes is this. So let, you see this? What is that? Is that an eye? Is that an eye? Is this a proboscis? Is this a bug? My goodness, it's a bug. Why is there a bug underneath dream girls? Because it's true. That's why. Uh-huh. They're being used as bait for the host body system. Yep. Do they know it? No, they don't know it. Some of them do. Some of them are full operating. Now, here you go. Here's an image of the Virgin on this guy's back. Well, look down here. Let's take a look down here. You see all those windows that are part of whatever, I guess, you know, is supposed to be his barrio or something? Well, when you look at the clouds and you see they make a circle right here, kind of an oval shape, kind of the same oval shape, bilateral symmetry, that should clue you off. And then there's these horns. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Those are, so here's the eye, here's the eye, here's the mandible, and then look at all this in here. Let's turn that upside down because Isaiah said, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord, they turn everything upside down. So let's turn the virgin upside down. And why is it a bug every single time? Somebody tell me that. Why do we have a bug? There is a purple eye, purple eye, and all those little dots are called omatidia. I learned that when I was in biology. A compound eye has little lenses called omatidia, and flies have them, bees have them, wasps have them. Have them. It's a compound eye, compound lenses. And so look, there's the uh, mandibles, and look, there's a proboscis, and look what's right there. Oh no, not a vagina again. Yep, always the same thing. So now we have an impossible common denominator. And the common denominator we have is the largest altar in the world, steering wheel to the truck, images of the virgin, girls with tattoos over their vaginas, and they all have the same common denominator, bug mandibles. And remember, I already showed you a dragonfly has mandibles, and they're called labium. And it just so happens they named the sides of a girl's vagina labia. Why would you name... Why would you name, you know, genitalia after your a mouth? Because it is the mouth of the bug that's running this dimension. That's how he gets his food. That's why the largest altar in the world has a bug with his mandibles right over the entrance to a vagina. It's the largest altar where people get on their knees and worship. Wow. <laughs> that's why when these people come up with their nonsense you know, false prophet stuff. I'm like, I hope you like hot. A lot. 
Here we go. Here's Drew Barrymore. Here's Drew Barrymore, and she's wearing a dress, and her dress is a bug. Again, with the mandibles on her vagina. So, and just to make it perfectly clear, I colored in the eyes a little bit for you blue. And so I just lined it up with another type of ant that just has longer mandibles. Now, here's a band that's called Alien Ant Farm right here. I'll enlarge this. And then I'll show you, you know, these guys are part of the program. Alien Ant Farm. It's got half the face white, half black. Half the face white, half black. I don't know how that popped up, but it did. Half the face white, half black. And it's an ant, and it's a triangle. It's a pyramid. Now, let's, let's, let's look at that a little more closely. You see... You see this right here? You see that? That's called the double cross. That is a satanic cross right above the ant. That's what the Pope actually wears on his on his miter hat a lot of times. Again, and then you have the sigil of Baphomet, the upside down star right here, which represents the church of Satan. That right there. And then you see mandibles in there too. So we have this common denominator. I can take this and move it up there. It's the same. I can take it, put it on top of this girl and her tattoo. It's the same. I can take the same image, put it on top of the largest altar in the world. It's the same. And I can put it right on top of this ant face. And it's the same. See? Alien ant farm. Get it? Alien ant farm. Let's go back. See? Alien ant farm there you go well what are they farming they're farming semen which turns into host body prisons that's where everybody comes from gets trapped there you go because the the sperm is a living thing it carries the life in it okay now let's keep going here here's the double here's the double cross right on the head of the Pope. There you go. And then there's a, there's a, the steering wheel, largest altar in the world, girl's tattoo, and it's all the same as what? A big bug. I mean, it's all the same. So there's no way to argue with any of this data because it's pervasive and it's over and over and over again. Um, here's the World Cup trophy right here. I'm going to enlarge this. I'm going to show this to you, and we're going straight towards that hieroglyph. You see, that's a scorpion tail, folks. There's the bulb of the tail, and there's the stinger right there. You see the stinger right there? It's a scorpion tail. And you can tell by the way the lines are done, the movement. This is called movement. And so they made sure they put the proper movement in for the art to make it a scorpion tail. And then here's a kind of a little takeoff on it. They had one that was like a Russian, and see it says, I kill you. And of course, look, it's making like an evil face, I, I, open mouth. But it's also a scorpion tail, I kill you, because the ones that are running the show from the bottomless pit. So let me just open up this little four panel right here, and then we'll get, there you go, look at this. Alien Ant Farm, look what's going over the one eye right here. A lightning bolt. I spelled Satan falling as lightning from heaven. Barack Obama. See the lightning bolt going right over the one eye of the ant? That's the ant farm. Get it? We're in it. That's right. And that, I mean, guys, just, isn't that just fascinating? I hate to be so Spockish, but fascinating, Captain. <laughs> That's just so, it's literally perfection in data. This data is just perfect. It's mind-blowing. All glory to God. Okay, so now let's go down, and we've already seen this, but let me show you something I want you to see. Let's get down to the female reproductive system right here. Just, I want everyone just to take a little look at that. Now, don't forget, they said, let us create man in our image. Who said that? Elohim. I think, should we go over Elohim one more time? Yeah, should we do it? 
Well, ready? Watch. So they did create them male and female. Genesis 1, chat, uh, verse 26. And Elohim, that's God's angels and magistrates, that are of the supreme God. It's not the supreme God. The supreme God is El Elyon of the supreme God. You see it? Of the of the supreme God. And the word is God. I want everyone to learn this. Do not be fooled by people that try and tell you otherwise. I'm going to use the scriptures right now. And I'm going to take Genesis 1. And I'm going to prove to you Genesis 1 is not the supreme God. Because didn't Lucifer say, no, let's just talk. Didn't Lucifer say, I will ascend above the stars of God? Yes, I shall be like God. Yes, yes or no. Did he say that? I'm pretty sure he said that in Isaiah. You want to go look? So if Isaiah is going to ascend, I mean, if Lucifer wants to ascend above the stars of God, and it's like, you know, God Almighty, well, then the word for God right there when he says it, it has to be the one who he's going to ascend above, right? I mean, what is he going to ascend above himself or someone below him? The answer is, uh, it only takes a fifth grade logic to go, if you say, I'm going to ascend above the stars of God, well, God better be the guy you're trying to take down then, right? I mean, so the word God better be the same word right there. Otherwise, this isn't God. Okay, so let's look. And God said, let us make man in our representative figure, especially an idol, vain show. You read it yourself. A representative figure, especially, not maybe an idol, especially an idol, a vain show. So man is an idol and man is a vain show. So if God, if you think the image of God is an idol or a vain show, if you think that's the most high God, then you and I serve a different God. That's all there is to it. I serve the most high God. I don't serve this God. This is not who I serve. Okay, so here you go. So God said, let us make man in our vain show. So let me show you the number for the word God here. The number for the word God here is Hebrew word 430. It's Elohim. It means God's. It means of the supreme God. See, look. So it means of the supreme God. So how could it possibly be the supreme God if it's of preposition of the supreme God? Could it be the supreme God if it's of the supreme God? No, because it's of the supreme God. It's not the supreme God. So let me prove it because Lucifer said, I'm going to ascend above the stars of God. And by the word, stars means angels, princes. Let's go. Okay, ready? We're in Genesis 1, verse 26. Now we're going to Isaiah, my favorite book of the Bible. Isaiah 14. How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer. See right there, Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground? It means the earth. How art thou cut down to the ground, the earth, which didst weaken the nations? Look, troop of animals, flight of locusts. For thou hast said in thine heart, let's highlight it. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Look at the word God here. Okay, here's the word down here, God in Genesis 1. The word in Genesis 1 is Elohim. It's Hebrew word 430. What's the word? What's the word right here for God? So Lucifer wants to ascend above the stars of this God right here. It's capital G, little O, little D, but what number is it? it it's 410. It's not 430. Let's look at what that is. Oh, it says the Almighty right here especially the Almighty. Do you see it? Especially the Almighty God. Back to Genesis 1. 
Genesis 1. And Elohim said, not the Almighty, let us make man in our image. The Almighty never made man in his image because we're a mess. Do you think we're made in the image of God? What are you, crazy? You think God behaves like us? <laughs> That's so crazy. It's like, uh, simple logic, folks. Anyway, yeah, I just showed you the word. One's Elohim is Hebrew word 430. And and the word God, let's go look. By the way, let's let's read that word, Isaiah 14. What's the word for God? What's the what's the Hebrew word for God right there? L, L, like El Elyon. Now you know in Psalm 82. Watch when Jesus said, "Your own scriptures say you're gods, but you shall die like men." Watch. You are all children of the Most High. Let's go to Psalm 82 now and just prove it all out. I love proving the Bible is true. Here you go. Psalm 82. I have said you are gods. Look, I have said you are Elohim. See, gods of the Supreme God. I have said you are gods and all of you are children of, look, the Most High. Look, Elion, the Supreme, the Most High, not Elohim. So now... According to the exact definition of the word of God, the Lord God has let me prove that Genesis 1 is not the Lord God. It is God's. It's Lucifer and the fallen. Let us make man in our vain shell. There you go. There it is. And so now I'm going to go ahead and reduce that. Now let's take a look at this. This is what most men are after. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Okay, there it is. Let's take a look at that. Uh, try and look at the negative space. What I mean by that is this. and See the black? Okay, just, just stare at that for a minute. Just squint your eyes a little bit and stare at this part right here. Just stare at that right there for just a minute. Just stare at that for just a minute. Okay, just let that sink in for a sec. Okay, now, you ready? Let that sink in your brain. That's called a template. In your brain, there's what's called template matching. Like if I tell you right now, look at the dog running. Your brain instantly formulates an image of a dog running. Each of us have different templates depending on what we've seen in our lives as dogs running. You know, you grew up with Labradors, you may picture a Labrador. You grew up with a Chihuahua, you may picture a Chihuahua. So each of our templates are a little bit different. So... I just gave you a template to look at. Okay, it's the female reproductive system right here. Let me move my picture out of the way. So there it is. I want you to look at that right there, okay? So now you got a template for that. Now let's go back. Let me show you some steering wheels again. Let me let me show you a steering wheel that's not in my truck. Uh, there you go. There's a steering wheel that's not in my truck right above the female reproductive system. Do you notice anything? Why are the sides of a, a female's vagina called labia? Why are the sides of a bug's mouth called labium? Because it's true. Do you understand? The host body system is the trap. So see, see the steering wheel? It's identical to the female reproductive system, which is identical to a bug. It's eyes and mandibles, labia. I mean, what's the difference? Right? So anyway, so here we go. Let's do it again. So this time I'm going to like superimpose it in a different way. Ready? There. So now I took the female reproductive system and I put it very small inside the same thing that's big. It's identical. Oh my gosh. So why are our steering wheels look like bugs, mandibles, and female reproductive systems, right? Where our sexual organs are that's kind of weird have you noticed the big move in society it's all female now bible says in the end a woman will compass a man oh energy get it yeah it's here the cycles run its course and i'm going to be showing you some stuff that proves that just fully and completely again and again and again Okay, so now, so there's, yeah, I think someone told me this is Carrie Underwood. Uh, what's with the big bug on your dress? By the way, here's a, here's a big praying mantis 
There's the eye. There's the tip of the nose. There's the eye. Antennas. And here's the bug that's receiving the penis. There's the penis right there. Someone tell me that's not a penis. Is that not a penis right where her vagina is? Is this a bug? Are these antenna? Are these eyes of a bug? Is the penis going in the mandibles? Well, here's the thing. Isn't that the common denominator that we have all the time? I mean, it's like a, it's like you can't escape it. It's like inescapable. It's like, duh, yes. Why are a bug's mandibles called labium? Why are a girl's sides of her vagina called labia? Why would you do that? Because it's their world. That's why. It's one of my favorites. I mean, I just got to make a joke about it because Octavia Butler, who wrote a book about, you know, humans being taken as, away as slaves for mating with an insect race, but you came to me to save HOA. I, I don't know what HOA is. Homeowners Association, maybe. <laughs> and to keep you for myself. <laughs> but bug girls have lots of babies. <laughs> it's like, whatever. But that's just twisted. That's out of Octavia Butler's book, Blood Child. So here we go. Now, we're going into the hieroglyph. But before we go, I'll get, y'all remember Celine Dion's clothing line called In You, In You, In You, New, New, New. And it's a, a sheep with one eye closed. Oh, isn't that the same as the steering wheel? You got one eye closed. And look, the other eye is a star, an angel. Oh my gosh. And look, it's the Skull and Bones Club. Well, check it out. See the N right here is identical to the U, except it's upside down. Those who try and hide their plans, they turn everything upside down. So there's a right side up U and there's an upside down U. You know, that's the system. I always I always do this, but just do this. There's a right side up U and an upside down U. There's a double you get it oh and they love to mock you all day long like you don't know so i was walking through the store the other day and i i looked over and i saw oh look downy unstoppables see see the u in the n do you think there's anything going on there well let's let's look at the picture it's a bug with mandibles again no cleverly disguised and what's the big drop going down no is that like the altar where there's semen going in a bug's mouth that's pretty crazy so here's a bug with its eye and its eye and there's its mandibles and those are the unstoppables you right side up you and upside down you a w now here's one that i thought was interesting uh here's obey clothing line why would you have why would you have the word obey with two cherries? Someone tell me. Can you figure it out? Do you know, you know what's up? I'll give you like 30 seconds to guess. Okay, that's enough time. Because they're making fun of Eve. It's like the serpent, the angel had sex with Eve, and then Adam. Get it? Double cherries. Get it? They're making fun of Eve. And that's the system. You have to obey because of the double cherry. And, you know, the, they're making a reference to a girl losing her virginity. And they're kind of making fun of Adam and the angel that had sex with Eve. Heteropaternal, super fecundation, twins, double cherry. Get it? And you have to obey that system. That's why they have obey on there and two cherries. That's it. How Otherwise, how would you know what that means? I know exactly what their stuff means. Uh, look at that. Look at this one. They're shooting the bird. They're giving you the double bird. And they're making a double U. And they're shooting the bird. And they're making a spear tip representing penetration. See? And it's like the double F U. And makes a double U. And it represents penetration. Now, I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go off you know, topic real quick. Um, I think this is fascinating because even as far back as when I was a kid, I w there was a movie that we used to watch. It used to come on occasionally. It was called, it's a mad, 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 mad world. And, um, here we go. It was called, it's a mad, 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 mad world. And everyone's trying to find this great treasure that's hidden in this guy. You know, he runs off the road and right before he dies, he tells everybody this treasure's 
hidden under this and everyone's trying to find the treasure. And remember, the whole double U system is about there's a double U, there's a Cain, and there's an Abel inside each one of us. Cannibal. But let's let me just go to the the movie I'm talking about. There you go. It's a mad, 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 mad world. And see, the treasure of all treasures is hidden right under here, right there in the flower bed. And there's 11 people. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You know why? Because that represents the Hindegogram, which is the host body system, an 11-pointed star. I mean, this is just fascinating. So there's 11 people that make up the W system, the 5 and 5, get it? And it makes a W. But there's 11 people, a hendecagram, which is called the Kelepot in Jewish Kabbalah. And then look, here's another. So look, there's, there's the thing for the movie. It's a mad, 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 mad world. And see, it makes a W. It's these two trees joining together. And then here's another picture of the cast. And by the way, there's a lot more people in the cast than, than just these. But let's see. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Hindecogram, host body system, double U. There you go. And so, see, whoever produced this movie, the spirit that was using him, is just mocking you. It's a mad. Now, let me show you some about this. Watch this. Let's do a Google image search. Watch this. Because I told you the earth is going to birth a bunch of locusts, right? And so, and they're going to come out and they're going to have tails like scorpion and they're going to sting people. Let's see. It's a mad, 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 mad world. There it is. There you go. See, look. They, it's even on their cover, look. See? They show the world popping open and just like a flood of locusts coming out. See them? Boom. And yeah, there you go. See? It's, it's, uh, if ever this mad, 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 mad world needed, it's a mad, 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 it's now. Do you think that's the Lord telling you it's going to happen now, right now, while, while he's showing us this? Maybe. <laughs> See the earth birthing? No, that's a representation of what's coming out of the earth. A bunch of locusts. Let's see. So, yeah, it's just, look at that. I mean, you know, you couldn't even think this up. There you go. Okay, let's go back to our stuff. Female rival. There you go. So see, look. See the double U female rival shooting the bird at you? I mean, you know, come on. It's a joke. Okay, so here we are. Let's break down the hieroglyph that I showed you at the beginning of this. Here is a guy that's trapped in hell, and he's being burned. His soul's being burned because this is the system. Now, let me show you something amazing. I drew in all of the changes of the shadow. And, and let me explain something so you understand the way this works. There are people that have tried to start channels doing what I do. I'm like, are you crazy? I mean, are you crazy? Someone actually tried to draw in this hieroglyph and say, oh, look, there's the Joker, see? Because God knew that Satan's a Joker. Are you kidding? Look, there's Donald Trump in this hieroglyph. Let me tell you something. And you know who you are if you're watching this. Boy, you better throw yourself down at God's feet and beg for forgiveness for convoluting the truth. That's sick and twisted. And shame on you for ever even thinking to do such a thing. Now let that be a warning to everyone else as well. You never take what the Lord God gave to his servant and try and claim it as your own. That's insane. I mean, you don't have to answer to me. You got to answer to the chief. And let me tell you something. The biggest enemy of the truth is not a lie. Did you know that? You know what the biggest enemy of the truth is? A variation of the truth. And that's what a couple people I've seen are doing. So don't ever take the information that the Lord gave to a servant and try and put your spin on it. <sighs> You got to be nuts. Don't do it. You'll have to answer for it because then you're convoluting something that was pure, that was given to a servant and try to put your spin and your name on it. That's crazy. Don't do it. Okay, let everybody be warned on that, okay? I've seen it. 
So there is a spirit trapped in hell. There it is. Here's his eye right here. And look at the flames. He's got two horns. He's got a horn there and a horn there. And he's in flames. Look, see the mouth, chin, nose, top lip, nose, eye. Okay, well, I'm going to reduce it in size. And that's at the feet of Akhenaten. He's got his feet on top of a door. And the guy can't get out. And we're going to start bringing it down. I took this from the Matrix. This is Agent Smith. Now, remember this. Remember, y'all remember like Burning Man, you know, the big party, pagan party in the desert? That coordinates are like 119, which is the number of man in the Bible. You know, the Hebrew number of man in the concordance, 119. Well, here in this hieroglyph, they have a guy, a soul being burned. And I, I took an image from the matrix of Agent Smith right here. Just to show you, that's what this represents. They're just burning him, fuel. And so here he is right here. So I'll take him right here and I'll just slide him right up. There you go. See, there he is. So I'll take this one right here and I'll slide it down. Uh, I'll reduce it inside. There it is. Let's see. There it is. See, there's a guy trapped in hell, and he's being burned as fuel. That's at the feet of Akhenaten. Okay, so now let's let's start with the whole system. Here's the system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to kind of shove this over, and I'm going to show you the sheep first. Here's the sheep. There's the eye of the sheep right there. Eye right there. Top of the head right here. Let's go down the snoot. Go down the snoot, down the snoot. There's the nostril of the sheep right here. Here's the front, you know, part of the mouth of the sheep open. And then open mouth, there's the tongue hanging out. Here's the bottom jaw of the sheep going under the neck. And then this part right here, that's the ear of the sheep. Now I'm going to reduce it. It'll be easier for you to see. You see the sheep with its tongue sticking out? There it is. Okay, now... That's the open mouth of the sheep with the tongue sticking out. Now, why do you think people say, hey, how's it going? Why do you think the Catholic Church has a giant altar with a sheep with its tongue sticking out? It's identical to this hieroglyph, you know that, which is an alien system, alien ant farm, remember? This is an alien system that captures God's angels, uses above-ground bait, Angels are stupid enough to say, yeah, we want that. It's a forbidden fruit. Do you know why it's forbidden now? Because it opens Pandora's box, so to speak. It opens the dimension to the other side, the Citra Akra. All makes sense now, doesn't it? That's how the dimension gets opened. So then it gets quarantined. The Lord quarantines it, then he burns it. He saves those which get saved, that get redeemed, and then those that don't get redeemed go into the eternal flames. Okay, so Isaiah said, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord, they turn everything upside down. So I'm going to turn this, this, this system of the sheep getting eaten, I'm going to turn it upside down right here. So I just put it right there, turn it upside down, and now I'm going to show you what it is. This is everybody's new daddy. So when you lost the Lord God as your father and you got a new father, which is Satan, you're of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning when he lies. It's consistent with his character for he's the father of lies and he's the father of it. So that's why you have to repent 100% from lying. You got to be willing to die to tell the truth no matter what. You're asked. I don't care what you're asked. I was asked several times by Child Protective Services questions that could have made me lose my kids, and I told them the truth, and I nothing happened. Now, if I would have lied, I guarantee you the Lord would have severely punished me. And you don't. You never lie for any reason. You always tell the truth, no matter what. One hundred because Satan's the father of lies. Lying is the language of Satan. So I told my friend Gary, you never quit lying. You lie like it's nothing. Oh, I'm not as perfect as you. I'm like, that's not what I'm saying. I just, I repented. You got to decide you'd rather die than lie. Okay? 
Lying is the language of the devil. Okay, so look. So let's, so remember Isaiah said, those who try and hide their plans, they turn everything upside down. So here's this guy wearing a red turban. I'm going to go like this. Here's this guy wearing a red turban. See him right here. There's his eye right here. Sharp pointy nose. Mouth is wide open. And coming out of his mouth is a tongue going right to the nose of this kid that's upside down. And look, the whole sheep is upside down. See, there's the sheep's eye. There's the sheep's nostril. There's the sheep's tongue sticking out, bottom jaw. So see, he turned the sheep upside down because this guy has been birthed into the flesh and his head, his consciousness is the egg, the birthing place of another race of beings. That's right. Inside your head is where the birthing takes place. It's your consciousness. It's another consciousness. So now I'm going to I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to show you let's see. I colored it in. I colored it in right here to make it a little more obvious for you. Now just look at it upside down. So just okay, so here's the sheep. I mean, this is right side up actually. So here's the sheep. There's the sheep's eye, nostril, open mouth, tongue sticking out, bottom jaw. The ear of the sheep is the face of the kid. By the way, the kid's got sharp little teeth like a vampire, but this part of the kid's face is the ear of the sheep. See it? The ear, eye, tongue, sheep. But look where, look where the tongue is going, right to his nostril. And then look how close, look how close the Pharaoh is holding him to his, to his face. Look at that. Because he's taking his breath. He's stealing the breath of his own child. Breath is spirit. He's taking his spirit. Do you get it? He's cannibalizing it. Because he's a cannibal. Your new dad's a cannibal. Satan is a cannibal. He lied to everybody. Okay, now let's build the system. Now, watch this. I'm going to click on this right here. And I'm going to take this egg right here. Watch this. Okay, now, the, you see the shadow around the kid's head? That's the egg because the kid's head is an egg. See? So, look, I just drew it all in. There's the egg. And what's inside the egg? A dead sheep. See it? There's the dead sheep inside the egg. So, the sheep's dying. And the kid's a hybrid. See the serpent, see the woman. Let's say, let me, let me perfect this. There it is. There's the sheep inside the egg. The kid's head is an egg. That's what this shadow makes right here. See, if you just go in the whole shadow, the whole thing's an egg on the outline of the shadow. So the kid's head becomes an egg to birth a new race of beings. Now, y'all remember what Lady Gaga said. My performance at the Grammy Awards is about a new race of beings being birthed within the human race. Wow, it's right in this hieroglyph. All glory to God. Okay, so now, well, what's, what's birthing in there besides, you know, what's happening besides the sheep dying? Well, let's click on it and let's, Grab this reptile real quick, and then I'll enlarge this, and I'll put the reptile where he goes. Let's see. There you go. There's the reptile in the egg. And by the way, there's other little nuances in the shadows that I drew in that make the reptile tail. There it is. Let's see. There it is. So now there's a reptile in the head. There's a dead sheep in the head. So the head of the kid is a reptile in the fetal position, and it's a dead sheep as well. So it's both. So let me build the puzzle for you. So I'll take the reptile right here. I want to get this little thing, and I'll put it right here. Watch. There it is. So there's the reptile in the egg. Right there. There it is. All fit in. Now I'll let go of the reptile. And then I'll take the sheep and put the sheep in it. 
let's see there's the sheep let's see let me size it exactly some of them have different resolutions there you go there's the sheep so inside the head of the child is a reptile boom and there's a sheep boom and that's one consciousness dying one spirit the spirit of the sheep is dying and the consciousness of the reptile is growing all in your head why do you think in the end of the world the beast is going to be unleashed because that monster in your head has cannibalized what was good there's nothing left in the end your worst enemies will be members of your own household children will rise against their parents and cause them to be killed what yeah because they're monsters, they're beasts inside of you. The, you know that song, The Imagined Dragons, with the beast inside, there's nowhere we can hide. This is my kingdom come, this is my kingdom come. Yeah, Lucifer's kingdom come. Exactly. There you go. Okay, so now, um, this image is just profound. I mean, this is... And this, it might be a little hard for you guys, but I showed it in the hieroglyph. There are three serpents. There's a serpent right here. There's a green. There's the eye. There's the eye, open mouth, bottom jaw. And this guy is in its mouth. There's his mouth. And the jaw doubles across his, like the bridge of his face. And there's the eye and the eye. Here's another serpent coming up from below. There's the eye. There's the open mouth. And there's another serpent. So this guy that's on his side, eye, eyebrow, eye, eyebrow, nose, and open mouth, he's being munched down by three serpents. And when you look at this queen's hand, it's like her hand doesn't look normal at all. When you look at it, there it is. Look at that. Look at that big lump. What's that? Are holding hands? No. It's the... This is the kid's worst enemy is his own mom. And it's a reptile, three serpents eating this guy right there. Triple helix DNA. That's what's up. There's the beginning of triple helix DNA. And here's the serpent. I'm sorry. And there's a serpent that's made going up the entire length of the, the woman's body. And what's really amazing is, look, you see the serpent in green coming up? Look at the eye of the serpent right there. See the eye of the serpent? This is like a python. There, its mouth is actually open. I just didn't want to draw it all in so people would struggle with it. But there's the nose of the serpent. There's the eye of the serpent. And here's the banding on like a python. That's exactly. And this is the head. But watch. That's really the bottom of the kid's body. So this is the, this is the navel of the child. And this is the hips. And then I was like, why does the kid have legs like a pork chop? What kid's got legs like a pork chop? It's because it's really a serpent. And see, look, here's the serpent, and it's eating the kid. And the eye of the kid is this big green reptile that's behind the queen. And look, there's a stinger going in her neck. See the tip to the stinger? And it's got DNA transcription in the stinger. And the same thing's happening to the Pharaoh. They both have stingers going in their necks. Pretty wild stuff. I was like, what is this? I remember when I was doing it. So now let's take the queen and let's turn the queen. Let's isolate the queen right here. There's the queen. Now, I'm going to turn the queen's face upside down. Right here, we turn it upside down. Everybody tell me what is that. That's a dead sheep. There is the eye of the sheep. There's the teardrop coming out of the eye. There's the ear, top of the head. There's the black nose. There's the tongue under the neck. So why is the queen turning into a dead sheep? Because it's true. This is the system. There you go. Let's see. There you go. There it is. There it is. Perfect. So see, look, I just took this sheep, turned it upside down, slid it right over here. It's the queen. See, why is the queen in a hieroglyph that's 1,300 years before Christ? Tell me how in the world any human being could show you the queen Nefertiti is identical 
to the largest altar in the world. How is that possible? Because it's the truth. Quick, call Giorgio Sakopoulos with Ancient Aliens and tell him you know someone who can put him out of a job. <laughs> they, you know why, you know, I actually sent them an email. I'm like, hey, guys, if you want to know what's up, just give me a call. No response. They're selling too many uh, Ancient Alien uh, vids. Okay, now, now let me show you some about the queen right here. Let me show you some right here. I'm going to show you some about her hand right here. Let's take the whole hieroglyph for a second. It's got the whole agenda put in it. So I want, I want you to look right here at the queen's hand. The queen's hand. If you look, all you got to do is just squint your eyes a little and you'll see what's up. This is the mouth. Of, this is the head of a serpent. And then this line right here becomes the open jaw. And then the kid's legs are hanging out of the mouth of the serpent. And then if you color in these lines, that's the body going down the serpent. Now let me just explain that. So let me just show you so you can see it. I'll make it very simple for you. But remember, this is a supernatural spiritual gift. So here we go. So here you go. I'll take this right here, and I'll just slide it over here. There you go. That's what it turns into. See it? So the kid's legs are hanging out. And so to really just kind of draw it in, you would have to simply color this part right here in green, dark green. But that is definitely the serpent swallowing her own kid. Because that's the system. They eat their own. It's a cannibalistic system. See, Cain and Abel, again, cannibalistic system. Look at that. That's perfect, guys. My goodness. It's the same exact thing. Cannibalistic system. Look at that. That's just amazing. Okay, so again, the system is the Pharaoh had, you know what, let, let's, do, uh, let's do this. We're going to zoom in on this, and I'm going to show you just very bluntly what's up. Okay, that is an alien right here. Green eye, green eye, top of the head, and his neck. Now, the alien's head and neck turns into a scrotum and a penis penetrating the female's vagina right here. Remember the labia. She's been, she is being inseminated and they have it just pushed back and here's her buttocks, her knee going down, out behind her body. Here's her hip right here. I could have colored the kids, um, I could have colored the kids abdomen pink right here. That's her hip going down to her knee and her leg going out. I penciled in the eye for you and I made her hair blonde for your perception, but I can see it. Why is there an alien penetrating this girl? And the serpent said unto the woman, there you go, there it is. And then I just kind of drew that in. There's the serpent inside the head of the kid, the reptile. And then here it is again. And I just penciled in the sheep kind of yellow just very rudimentary very quick just so you can see that's the sheep there's the eye nostril tongue so it's it's a sheep dying and it's a reptile growing inside a human host body because we are becoming that race that's why lady gaga's performance at the grammy awards was about another race of means being birthed within the human race right Okay, here, hang on one sec. Let me show you that real quick. I got it right here. So remember, Lady Gaga came out on the stage, and she she was carried out in what? Okay, remember, the, the kid's head, the child's head is an egg, remember? And there's a dead sheep, and there's a reptile. And there's Lady Gaga right here being carried out onto a stage in an egg, which is the same as the kid's head in a hieroglyph that's 1,300 years old. And don't forget, she's a female, female, in the end, a woman will compass a man. And so she's going to come out of that egg, and when she comes out of the egg, she purposely puts the hat right on the side of the egg. Oops. Uh-oh. Here we go. There it is. To make 
this all is one alien head. There's the eye, and this is all the head. So here she comes out of the egg, the new consciousness forming, the new consciousness being birthed. There it is, right there. That's why she said, my performance at the Grammy Awards is about a new race of beings being birthed within the human race. I want you to look at her hair. See how she's got her hair like a genie? Have you noticed anyone else that really likes to do her hair like that? Ariana Grande, God is a woman, remember? Yeah, because their God is female. It's posing as female. There you go. It's it's just a trap. So now let me go back to female rival. Here we go. Okay, so now this to me is like one of the most mind-boggling parts of the whole thing. I'm going to take this whole thing and put it in negative imagery right here. And if you're able to see, this is going to blow your mind. Here is an eye. This is the eye of the devil. The other eye of the devil is right here. See the eye right there? That's an eye. That's an eye. That's an eyebrow. And as I reduce, that's the nose. There's the mouth. That's the chin. That's the nose. That's the mouth. That's the chin. The head of the kid has a horn wrapped around it because this kid, this egg, this consciousness is the eyes and the ears of the devil. There you go. And this whole system, there's the alien in orange and the eyes are white. Let me let me show you this image right here. And I put that in the hieroglyph, you know, when I showed you that original breakdown. Let me show you this. See, the, this will make it easier for you to see. There's one eye. There's the other eye. Here's the nose. Here's the nose. And there's the, the mouth and the line in the lip and the chin. And so then I'll enlarge it. So this is the face of the devil, eye, eye, nose, mouth, chin, and that's all in the negative space. So this kid becomes the eyes and the ear of the devil, get it? And then here's the whole thing as a collective consciousness. And so there you go. See the big face? There's the eye and the eye. There's the nose, nostril, nostril. There's the lip. There's the bottom lip, and the reason there's a gap on the bottom lip is because it's also the female reproductive system. And look how Akhenaten has his feet on top of the door, and this soul is trapped in hell right here. The resolution's not real good on this image, but you'll be able to see it. I just penciled it in. There's the guy trapped in hell. There's the guy trapped in hell, and the door shut. And this is the system owned by the evil one. There it is. In an Egyptian hieroglyph that's 1,300 years BC. Okay, now this is played out in today's, in today's, you know, disclosure. Everything I disclose now is basically the same as that hieroglyph. Okay, what's in the hieroglyph? Let's see. A dead sheep. Another dead sheep. What's the largest altar in the world? A dead sheep. Uh, what do they worship? The male and female reproductive system is a dead sheep. Look at that. There it is. There's the mystery of all mysteries right in front of your face. Solved and resolved. Okay, now, I have other stuff on my desktop and I could keep going. But I, I think I'll just make this one video. I think that's enough to absorb right now. Go back and watch the beginning again now. Like, now that the video is over... Just go watch the introduction where I draw on the hieroglyph again. It's the same as the largest altar in the world. You got to be kidding, right? No. There it is. You're looking right at it. Look. Boom. Same thing. Hieroglyph that's 1,300 years B.C. Catholic Church. Hieroglyph 1,300 B.C. Catholic Church. They're the same. How is it possible that that altar is the same thing as a hieroglyph that's 1,300 B.C.? Because we caught them. That's why they're caught. Because the Lord God just busted them. Those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret. 
and think no one will see them or know what they're doing. They turn everything upside down. And God's angels, we got turned upside down. We got caught in a snare. And that snare is the host body system. Because in heaven, there's neither male nor female. That's for this place. Yep, there it is. All right, guys, God bless. So go back and watch me drawing that hieroglyph again. Just look at what you just saw. Impossible. It's impossible. But you're looking at it. All glory to God. All right, guys.